fight with everybody? What am I, Donald Trump? All right, hi. Uh, <laughs> how should the media respond when Trump attacks a reporter or organization? Good question. Uh. You know, that press conference he had, that's, we're, we're entering a new era. Not a press conference, infomercial. Mm. Yep. Right. And also, you know, the idea, it's kind of genius, of, like, having your clack there yep. to laugh at you, you know? It's like what Howard Stern does. You know, he's got a little kitchen cabinet there where every yeah. move you make, ah, <laughs> you got, you got a great one, Johnny. That was a good... Well, it's this changes classic, everything. it's this classic, I mean, he, he actually, if you look in the textbook of personality disorders, is narcissistic. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, so I don't need. If, we don't need a book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a policy walk. I like to look at the book. Right. But you know, I mean, that's one of the things that he does. Right. He actually has this um, uh, shortage of popularity in the real world, and mm -hmm. so he is obsessed with the idea that he's popular. And so he creates this sort of sense of a cacophony of support, which mm -hmm. is just not true. As today's barely there mall. Right. Showed. Okay. Well, well, so, but to answer that question, everybody should have walked out. It would never happen. It would not have happened if, I don't, can't imagine the circumstances, any of the last five presidents had done it because in those press rooms, it is now not about getting an answer from the president, but getting yourself recorded and played on your own network sure. asking the question. And the guy could just go, oh, sure. and they would run that right. sound bite. So there's no uniformity and there's no collectivism. But if you now fill, well, if you now quadruple the press room, you guys walk out, CNN walks out, and NBC, ABC, and CBS somehow go out with him, that leaves... Uh, 47 Jeff Gannons to ask questions right. from the Bush administration. Remember right. him? Yes. That's who's going to fill those Bulldog other seats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's true. yeah. Well, if anything's good about this, though, it is. I feel like the press has been chastised, and they got the message. I don't know if they're changing. Uh, they, they've have changed to a degree already, yeah. but they do feel bad. I I've never seen them at least feel bad before. They do feel like, oh, yeah, we did fuck up. We, we did mm -hmm. uh, overhype the email bullshit, mm -hmm. and we did overcover Donald Trump, well, and the, look what we got. But they felt bad after Iraq, and it mm -hmm. didn't last long. It's a little <laughs> like what... Uh, uh, yeah. Tom Sawyer said about Huck Finn when an evangelical preacher came to town, the preacher was so good that Huck was saved until Sunday afternoon. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just not a, it's, it's a, a hard to stay on that wagon. I think that there's going to be a lot of terrific reporting. There has been a lot of terrific reporting. Uh, you look at what the Washington Post did on the fact that he's never given anything to charity. Mm -hmm. uh, the New York Times uh, had the GSA story today that the president of the United States, mm -hmm. as of now, is in violation of a GSA lease which explicitly says no federally elected official can own one of these contracts. So the moment he took the oath, he was in violation of federal uh, regulations. Uh, maybe that was one he suspended this, after, this evening. But I think that a lot of it is on, and we've been talking about this, a lot of it's on us to people to act on that information mm -hmm. and not let get it lost in the Trump state cacophony. Well, that's why I've been Johnny one note here, because... Tommy, one note, I guess. Hmm. Uh, yeah, because we, we can't normalize fake news. We can't allow the ethics breaches that have occurred. There have been more ethics breaches from the time of the election to the time of the inauguration than there... I mean, the, the Obama administration was squeaky clean. Mm. This guy is starting square one, and they've already violated yeah. every ethics rule in the book. Today. But we Today. cannot possibly organize... The first, the first and, and, you know, the and that's why you know, I got involved in this race for the DNC, because... We've got to get out there and organize, organize, organize. But we also have to be honest with ourselves as Democrats, Bill. Because we can, we can talk till we're blue in the face about Donald Trump's lack of character. But we also have to understand that, you know, on Election Day, we had folks that we didn't touch. Mm -hmm. You know, we got enamored with data analytics. And we ignored the old persuasion. You know, it's, it, you can't go to a church every 4th October and call that an organizing strategy. Yeah. We've got to get back to basics. And, and you look at rural America. You, you look at Wisconsin. And we Mitt also Romney, have to shout down our fringe, the politically yeah. correct assholes well, on the far left. Well, but getting more toward yeah. the center, too many of them. Look, it wasn't even that popular here in this room. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I understand. I mean, I, I think we, we, we have to get out there and make house calls. Because, you know, there is Howard County, Iowa, in 2012, went for Obama by 21 points. In 2016, went for 
Trump, Trump by 21 points. That's a 42-point swing. You can't sit here and say all Donald Trump voters are racist. No. Uh, that right. you know, there's plenty of Donald. There's plenty of right. David Dukes out there. But these folks, that the challenge was, we didn't touch them. We didn't listen to them. When Donald Trump comes in and tells you in Butler County, Ohio, which is coal country, and alienated, I'm going to bring your coal con I'm and gonna... alienated many of them, yeah. quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have this impression that we don't in care. the heart, not that we don't care, but that Democrats are just always coddling uh, irresponsible behavior. They just have that impression that the, the party of giveaways and the party who just doesn't care about the regular person anymore. And, the well, and when you talk about jobs, you know, in, in Ohio, for instance, I was there recently, uh, jobs, jobs, jobs was the number one issue. When Donald yeah. Trump comes in and says, I'm going to bring your coal jobs back, we know that's a lie. But what they heard, they, what they heard from the Democrats was, vote for me because Donald Trump is scary. And what they heard from the Democrats is, we're going to make you pee next to a guy in a dress. <laughs> and that's our number one priority. Well, there's, there's that, too. But they also heard well, or, or, or intuited that at this point, the Democratic Party, particularly that embodied by the Democratic nominee, not her challenger in the primaries, but by the Democratic nominee, mm -hmm. that, as George Wallace once said, there's not a dime's worth of difference. They see the elites and that there's this, this duopoly that ultimately is a plutocracy. And so, yes, yeah. the cultural stuff matters. But when they looked at Hillary, David Marin just did a great piece about the, the story of the Clintons is when he went from McDonald's to being a vegan. And that that shift yeah. lost a ton. Yeah. Of his the story of Clinton is not just about McDonald's and vegans and these cultural signifiers. It's about NAFTA and repealing Glass Steagall. I mean, there's actual policy right. that yeah. changed the face of this economy and the, and the welfare and bill. the welfare and the crime bill. Yeah. And I just I want to make sure yeah. that as we try to do this analysis of what went wrong mm -hmm. with the Democrats, we don't end up sort of lionizing. Uh, the kind of regular American who is, you know, in all of our imaginations, mm -hmm. like a, you know, middle-aged white guy, like this guy named Gary that called into a C-SPAN show that I was on and said, I'm a white male and I'm prejudiced. And, you know, you could hear a pen drop on the set. Mm. And he then went on to say, you know, it's the gangs and the drugs and, you know, repeating all the Fox News stuff. And then at the end, he said, I actually want to change and be a better American. And I want to know if your guest, me, can help me do that. And it's an I had way to, to hit on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a birthday party to get to. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.